Hello beautiful makers, welcome back to Stitching the High Notes. And if you are new, welcome. My name is Joanna and this is a channel all about my adventures in making, most notably knitting, sewing, and cross stitching. I'm coming to you from the San Francisco Bay Area where I am a singer and business manager in the opera and classical worlds, hence Stitching the High Notes. You can see what I'm up to over on Instagram as Stitching the High Notes and what I'm making over on Ravelry as Opera Joe. There's also a Ravelry group where we have a bunch of nitty misfits over there. There's an introduction thread. Please introduce yourself. We would love to meet you. We have make-alongs, giveaways, and much more. You can find that by searching the groups tab at Stitching the High Notes. And I'm also a small business owner. I make project bags for knitting and needlework. Everything can be found at stitchingthehighnotes.com, as well as links to everything down below in the description box, as well as show notes for everything I share today. And hello, how are you all doing? This is a bi-weekly podcast, so it's been two weeks and what a two weeks it has been <laughs> since we last visited. Oh my goodness. Before I jump into all of the making and all of the making updates, I wanted to send you a big virtual hug. I hope that you are doing well, that you are staying safe. I am doing very well. I am staying safe here at home. Um, the Bay Area has been in shelter in place for a little over a week and um, I'm going on almost two weeks myself um, sheltering in place uh, working from home um, and some things are up in the air but I'll share more about that uh, in backstage chatter which is at the end of each episode where I chat about things that aren't necessarily making related if you want to stick around for that but yeah, I think let's jump into it. I have a lot to share with you all today, as I'm sure just like many of you, I have found myself with a little bit of extra making time and I'm a little bit more productive. So I have a couple of half finished objects, a uh, finished object and quite a bit of progress on a specific project. So Let's jump into it. I have a few quick announcements and things to share with you. The first up are that we have two make-alongs going on right now. The first is the Outlander Mal, which has officially been extended until May 1st. Yay! And that is to celebrate all things Outlander, the wonderful book series, as well as the show, which is now in its fifth season and it's currently happening right now. And everything can be found in the Ravelry group. We have a chatter thread and a finished objects thread. And oh, it's just so, so, so much fun. And the next Mal is that we have also going on right now is the Beatrix Potter Mal. And that's to celebrate all things at Beatrix Potter, gardening, spring, which is in full swing here in California. And it's delightful. All the colors, wonderful artwork that is from the stories by Beatrix Potter and oh, it's so delightful. So we also have a Ravelry group for that or we also have a thread, a couple of threads in the Ravelry group for that and that goes until the end of May, I believe. I think I've been saying it incorrectly, but I think it's the end of May. Of course, you'll see all of the details here up on the screen um, and yeah enough awkward chatter about the make-alongs. And I also have a giveaway prize for you, a special giveaway that came. I was gonna add it to the prize pools, uh, prize pools for the two make-alongs, but I thought given everything going on right now, it would be really cool to do a special giveaway. And let me grab it, hold on. Crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. So Donna, lovely, gorgeous Donna of Donna's Designs, she has an Etsy shop and she makes these beautiful project bags. And I love this fabric. I want to keep it all nice and secure for you. So it's all this beautiful. Oh, I love this. I gotta find this some similar fabric to this on it. I love the cross stitch, but it's a beautiful like shawl size bag, a medium to small project bag with a handle. 
And then she just um, generously gave me a bag too that's music related. So thank you so much, Donna. I can't wait to put a special project in this. But let's do a giveaway for this. So what I usually do for giveaways is to do it in the Ravelry group. So you'll need to be a member of the Ravelry group. Again, links are down below. And you'll need to answer a question. And I usually come up with the questions on the fly. <laughs> like I am right now. I think let's make it optimistic and hopeful and spring related. If, um, what's your favorite part about spring? That's quite broad, but I would love to see all of the various answers that you give. So I will pull for a winner in the next episode and announce then, and then pop it in the mail to you. So thank you so much, Donna. Very, very grateful finished makes so i have one finished make one thing that i cast on and i've cast on another one and that is a dishcloth my favorite dishcloth pattern is the wondrous dishcloth by jules hill also known as so sweet violet one of my favorite podcasts and youtube channels here and i have made another dishcloth i have two already that i use all of the time and I don't know about you, but now that I am home all of the time, I'm doing dishes nonstop because I'm cooking all of the time. And I needed a few more in rotation so I could kind of keep keep the laundry going and not do as much, but just kind of keep the rotation going. So I made this beautiful blue color, spring kind of blue. And I'll tell you about the yarn here in a second, but I wanted to share that I am nearing completion on a second one, which I cast on yesterday. And this one I knit in just about one day. And I think I just did the Kitchener the next morning. So they knit up really, really quickly. Oh, and I love this like lemony, oh, lemony yellow color. Now what's really cool about these dish claws and if you are a returning subscriber to the podcast, you are a returning viewer, you've seen this before, but I love the texture on the front. It helps um, just a little bit get kind of uh, hard to reach places and uh, a few bits of food that are stuck on dishes and stuff off. Um, and then it's double sided. So on the back you have like a stuck net stitch, but you'll see these little dimples and what it is, is that you knit through both the needle that you're on, you do this in magic loop, um, and you knit on the needle behind your front needle, so the the both needles. So you knit through both stitches on each knit needle. Mercy, I need to slow my roll here. I'm just so excited to visit with you all. <laughs> um, so that means that they're attached. So you have a very sturdy, squishy, wonderful dishcloth. And a lot of the times I fold it in half like this. So you get a really good solid, um, spongy kind of dishcloth. It's wonderful. And they knit up wonderfully. Oh, I can already see I've got a little piece of food there because <laughs> I had this by my sink, but I, they wash up. I just pop them in the washer and put it in the dryer and they, keep beautifully. I've had the other two at least six months, um, if not more, and they are holding up so, so well. So I love these. I'm so glad to have more in rotation and the yarn as promised. Let me grab the bag of all of the yarn that I have. So this is Shapies Katona, which is 100% mercurized cotton. And here's what it looks like. And they're in these little 25 gram balls. And each dishcloth is just about a whole one of these little balls. You only have like a little bit left over. And they're perfect. I got these on, I think I bought these on loveknitting.com. It's the yarn that Jules used um, for her pattern photos and to write the pattern. And I wanted to create a muted rainbow set and I bought two of each color so I could make a set for me and then a set for mom. 
So once I'm done kind of going through these and making me a set, I'm gonna make mom some and then give them to her when I'm able to see her again. So love it, love it. And of course you could use any other kind of cotton durable um, fiber that you wanna use, but yes. To have I mentioned that I love them? I think I have. <laughs> So on to the half finished objects that I finished. One of two hoes. <laughs> so the first half finished object, half object is my Jemima Puddle Duck socks. And this is just a vanilla sock. I'm using the vanilla cappuccino sock pattern by CC Allman of Java Pearl Designs with the fish lips kiss heel. And I love how this heel turned out. It really does look like a fish, <laughs> like fish lips. And the yarn is by Elm Tree Yarns in her Jemima Puddle Duck colorway. So of course these are for the Beatrix Potter Mal make along. And they were knit toe up. I used nine inch circulars for the majority of the sock except for the toe and the heel. And then the majority of the leg, I switched over to a uh, magic loop. And I did a two by two, uh, or yeah, two by two twisted rib because I love the way that it looks. And then I did Jenny's, I think it's Jenny's. I always get it, is it Judy, Jenny, vice versa. But I think it's Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. Um, and these will be for mom, hashtag socks for mama 2020. So they are 68 stitches instead of your standard 64 stitches um, for a medium um, kind of size sock. And they work really well for mom. This is the recipe that works really well for her, the pattern and the recipe. I did, I think a three, I've been doing like a three inch leg and then I do about 13 rows of a cuff and then I do the bind off because you get a little bit more height with the stretchy bind off. What the stretchy bind off does is that you do a uh, backward yarn over essentially. So you're adding a stitch as you do this. So you add a little bit of extra fabric um, to the edge of the cuff there. And the yarn, I mean, oh my gosh, I did not expect it to micro stripe like this and I love it so much. I adore this yarn. And of course I need to cast on the second one. So I've got it stored in my Beatrix Potter bag, my favorite bag by Marie Celeste Stitches that I got several years ago. Handmade, hand quilted and fussy cutted with all of, there's Jemima right there all the different characters. And I think this is Liberty fabric. Just, oh, I love it. And this is the yarn, the rest of the yarn all kicked up. So what I'm hoping is that I can make these socks for mom and then I'll have enough that using a contrasting um, yarn for the toes and heel and cuff, I can make myself a pair of shorty socks as well. Cause I would love some. So that is Ho number one, let me get ho number two. And here he is. The first Fergus sock is done. This is a pattern called Fergus's Socks by Yarnesty, AKA Anna Freiburg or Freiburg. Uh, it is a beautiful, beautiful pattern using right and left twisted stitches, creating this kind of argyle effect and texture. Oh, so, so pretty love it. So these are inspired by Outlander. So these are for the Outlander Mal. And Fergus is a character in the book series and the television show. Uh, these are also going to be for mom. They're a little bit bigger. As you can see, I did the medium size. So 72 stitches. And I did these on 2.25 millimeter needles, which is also what I used for this lady. I don't know why it's a guy and a lady, whatever. Um, or they, them, whatever you want to say, but I use 2.25 usually on my vanilla socks for myself and for mom. And I used uh, 2.25 for this, but did a slightly bigger size because um, she does 68, so 72 isn't too much bigger. And when 
um, uh, I did the circumference uh, suggestion, measuring the circumference of the foot. This is what uh, mom did the measurements of her foot and this is what worked. Um, I think last time I showed this, I was almost, I think I was starting the leg here and I was going to be going up, which I did just in the nick of time to help them finish up moving, my mom and my sister. They're all settled in by the way and thank goodness, talk about timing. But um, I went up and she tried this on and they fit perfectly. There's not a ton of negative ease, but again, these are gonna be great for sitting around in the house and kind of bed socks. She loves them and I couldn't be happier. I did a two by two, just regular ribbed cuff, so not twisted. Um, and then I did also the Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off as well. These were knit um, toe up, just as the pattern is written, as the pattern is written. And then there's a, I forget what it is. I think it's like a German short row heel right here. And she likes it, she, she digs it. I think she definitely prefers the fish lips kiss heels. So if I were to make these for myself, I think I would try doing it with the fish lips kiss heel, but I'm glad that I'm doing it as written because of course it looks really, really nice and really classic right here. The yarn is by Family Tree Yarns, lovely Jane. And this is in the Standing Stones colorway, which uh, I've had both of these color, these yarns in my stash for over three years. So this is a stash buster project as well. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm probably gonna be casting on the second one of this one fairly soon. Uh, this one, um, whenever I feel like it, I'm in no rush. I've got time <laughs> and I'm feeling the call of some other projects. Um, so we'll see when the second one of these will be cast on probably in the next week or so. So on to the next make in progress and it's a doozy. I've been doing a little bit of knitting the last couple of weeks. <laughs> this is the habitation throw by Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade. And it's kind of a corner to corner throw, just easy peasy. Uh, I think it's like a 10 row repeat over and over again. And as you can see, there are different colorways in here. This is designed to use advent minis, advent calendars. So I'm using a 10 gram mini from my Once Upon a Corgi and Advent of Wool and Minis advent calendar that I got this past year. If you saw Vlogmas, you probably saw me opening one each day and it's been such a joy and a comfort to knit on this. I love it so much. <laughs> this is going to be my reading on my couch, which is right behind you, um, throw and go to thing to nestle into. I just love it. And it's inspired by one of my favorite book series, A Court of Thorn and Roses by Sarah J. Moss or Mass, Moss, Mass, Tomato, Tomato. Oh, I believe it's Mass, but anyway. But oh my goodness, I love it so much. So I did catalog or um, update my stash on Ravelry. If you're interested in what all of these colorway names are, um, you can see that in the project page um, or in the stash page, which I'll link down below in the show notes. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. It's a Stellina base. So it's um, Superwash Merino and Stellina. And it's just, oh, so great. And I'm using a couple of different progress keepers as it gets bigger and bigger. So I can remind myself where I'm at. Like this one right here came with the advent calendar and I'm probably fairly soon going to be opening up uh, the other, I think there's two or three other progress keepers in there. Um, I'm on mini number 10 right now, which is called Rose Petals. And here's what it looks like. So pretty. For the most part, I've been joining each color on when I get to the right side row. 
Um, but up until recently, I've kind of stopped that because I'm like, I'm never going to look at what's the right side and the wrong side is when I'm wearing this on my lap. Um, and I want to use up as much of the yarn as possible because it was getting to a point where I would be actually sacrificing a lot of yarn just to make sure I was doing things on the right or wrong side. One thing is that I do, I probably would have done it for such a, a stark difference in colorways. So you can see here, I've got the little blip of dark yarn here, as opposed to if I had done it on the quote unquote right side, that's what it would have been, but whatever. There is the reason you're keeping track of right and uh, wrong side of your fabric is because there's this beautiful eye cord edging that you're doing. So you need to keep track in order to make sure you're doing a slip versus a knit um, to start the row. Ugh, and I just adore it. Oh, I don't know if you can see it with the with the um, sun going through it. It's so pretty. So what else to say about it? Just that I'm obsessed with it. I'm using my signature needles, uh, US size six, so four millimeter. They are like butter. They are my favorite needles by far. And yeah, I just, I can't stop, won't stop knitting on this. I have not knit on anything else or stitched on anything else. I did not cross stitch the last couple weeks. I was thinking about like cross stitching a whole bunch of stuff right before I podcasted, but I thought, you know, I've been going towards things that are comforting, that are easy, that are, um, just really are comforting is the big thing right now as many of us are. And so I'm, you know, definitely always have goals and I love setting goals, but this is not a time to be doing it. Now is the time to be doing what is creatively fulfilling and exciting and also some things that you really need, like my dish claws. Uh, one thing that is exciting that I do really want to start, and I'm starting to get the cross stitch bug a little bit, um, is that I have to grab it here, is that I got my fabric and my thread. So this is Floche, which is 100% cotton by DMC, this beautiful cream color. And you use one single thread uh, for your project so you don't need to split apart um, the plied thread. So you just grab and go. Um, and this beautiful fabric um, which is a 32 count charcoal Belfast linen. Oh, isn't this pretty? Obviously these colors combos are my jam. And this is to do the year long stitch along uh, by Modern Folk Embroidery um, that several of my stitchy friends and I are taking part in. And it was inspired by Sue of Legacy Fiber Arts who is doing it. And I am really eager to get started on this. But again, I'm just letting the creative winds take me where they will right now. And then of course there's the good old kilt hose. Kilt, the kilt hose are good. I figured out that I'm gonna do uh, the medium size, which I think I talked about in the last episode. And I'm gonna keep with the needles that I've been using, which are for the larger size, just because larger size. Uh, just because I, um, my gauge becomes really tight when I do cable work. So I'm all ready to go when I'm ready to pick that up. But yeah, so those are all of my makes in progress. Uh, let's see what's up next to share. I'm going to grab a little sip here. I'm drinking a new to me sparkling water called Aha, uh -huh, I guess. Um, and this is a lime and watermelon flavor, and it's okay. They're out of uh, La Croix, which is my kind of go-to sparkling water at the grocery store, as well as several other items, as I'm sure you are finding in your local stores as well. 
Um, so I've been trying out some different ones. Um, so I'm really grateful to have this. I don't need this. I don't have to have this, but, um, and I'm not as dependent on sparkling water as I have been in the past. Um, I just recently celebrated my two year soberversary. So I've been sober for two years <laughs> and, um, sparkling water, especially right at the beginning really was a necessity and really helped me get through. Um, and then over the couple of years, I haven't needed it, needed it as much. Um, but yeah, the thought of going through all of this without at least some kind of stash of sparkling water was a little, a little daunting, but at the end of the day, you know, come on though. But let me grab, let me stop yabbering and grab a sip and uh, I have some shop news to share with you. The next shop update is coming up really soon. It is next weekend, April 4th, Saturday at 10 a.m. Pacific. I will have bags in two different collections uh, that will be in the drawstring, the sweater size bags, needlework bags will be coming back in a limited supply because I have a limited supply of vinyl. I wasn't able to get too much more before everything went down. Um, but I'm really excited to share with you really soon the new bag design that I've been working on, which is a version without the vinyl window upon popular demand and request. Um, and there will be pockets for you to hook on your D rings of floss and much more and to put your scissors in. So I will have more information uh, about that over on Instagram as well as the newsletter. And also I will be vlogging in April. So starting April 1st next week, you will see probably all of the bags um, in all their glory and in the process of being made on mass. So um, yeah, so keep an eye out for that. The two fabric lines that I chose are just so lovely and I feel so grateful and so lucky to have been able to get them at a local store here, SF Bay Quilts, before everything shut down. So I literally went the day before the shelter in place was put in uh, place. <laughs> uh, they are still open, but they are doing online orders and um, curbside delivery as many stores are doing right now. And yeah, I'm just, I'm really excited about the, the, there's a really fun garden veggie, um, fabric to celebrate spring and gardening. And then this beautiful tulip pink, um, fabric that just recently came out that I'm going to be calling handmade with love that I thought was just so appropriate for right now. So, and they're, they're paired with a beautiful, um, Essex linen and the tulip pink with a beautiful kind of iridescent purple, um, tightly woven cotton fabric. So yeah, can't wait to, to whip them all up and to share them with you all very soon. There are some bags still in the shop as well. Um, uh, some drawstring bags and I think two, one or two of the English garden sweater bags are still in the shop. I will be doing, I'm going to be doing now two days a week shipping. So on Mondays and Fridays, um, and that's just to limit the amount of time that I go out. Um, the post office is right across the street from me and I'm able to drop stuff off without making contact. So they'll be nice and tidy and safe for you all. And I think that's it for shop news, which will get us to backstage chatter. Oh, yes, deep breath. <laughs> I've definitely been journaling and meditating quite a bit. I've been vlogging all March over on Patreon. Um, I have a Patreon community and page uh, link down below if you're interested. Um, where you can support uh, the channel and the small business, the growing small business. Um, and as a thank you, I decided right before March started to do daily vlogs because I was missing making them. I love doing vlogmas every year and I'm going to be doing them here. Obviously, as I mentioned here on the channel, I had already uh, planned to do them in June and October for Vlogtober and of course Vlogmas always here on YouTube. Um, but I wanted to do a little bit extra, um, 
something and also just to kind of get the the, the muscles built up before I do it over here on YouTube as well and try out some new things. So it's been a trip and a half to be vlogging during this time. I have to say the beginning of March was quite different than it is currently near now that we're near the end of March. So yeah, it's been, it's been really interesting, <laughs> but really good. I bring that up because it's been really, really good. It's obviously kind of like a journal and it's, um, I decided I wanted to do it in April, um, maybe in June, but probably not in June now. So definitely in April because, um, it's helping me to keep a really optimistic perspective. It's, it's forcing me to stop and smell the roses. It's, um, allowing me a minute to pause and seek beauty that I can share with you all and inspiration. And it's another creative outlet, uh, editing and creating stories, um, through videos. So yeah, I'm really excited to continue doing them next month. Uh, what else is going on? I've been reading quite a bit. I took part last weekend in a 24 hour and 40, read 24 hours and 48 hours um, reading a thon to uh, reinforce that everybody should be staying home right now. So I was a reading fool. I've been reading Crescent City by Sarah J. Mass. Um, uh, which just recently came out. I'm a little bit over halfway through the book um, and have been reading it on my Kindle, um, but for the most part doing audio, which of course makes it go a little bit slower, but I'm really digging the book. I'm digging it. It's like many of her world building and longer game series, because um, this will be part of a new series. You have to get into it and get get uh, into the characters and forget about the last series that you just read and say they're not all the same characters. <laughs> you know, the other characters are not gonna pop up anywhere, but sometimes there are ties between the universes, which is really cool. Um, I, yeah, I'm not in any rush to finish it. I've been reading a lot of magazines um, as well. I have some other books in the queue. I have a Goodreads account, link down below if you wanna check out what's in my queue for books. Um, for magazines, I'm reading The Simple Things, uh, which is a magazine from the UK. Uh, I read at the, uh, In the Moment magazine, which is a mindfulness magazine. Uh, Magnolia Journal, I really enjoy. Um, and then those are the ones I'm kind of concentrating on right now. But of course, there's like a plethora of other ones. Oh, the new Pom Pom Quarterly I just recently purchased. So I've been starting to go through that. And of course, I want to make everything in there, including that beautiful sweater that's on the cover by Hohi Locatelli. Um, I'm going to check out Making Things. I think they just came out with their third issue. And I've been kind of getting into Taproot magazine, although I can't really find too many digital versions of the magazine. So I'm always on the hunt. If you have any leads, let me know. Yeah, I think that's about it. I don't want to overshare because you're going to see a lot of me here pretty soon <laughs> in just a couple of days because I will be on here daily sharing 10 minute or less uh, little mini vlogs each day. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's interesting being home and it could easily become Groundhog's Day, but it isn't. I don't think, I don't feel like it has because there's always something new to do each day. Of course, I'm working from home as many of us are and so there are, there's a different rhythm sometimes to each day. I am very lucky I'm able to get outdoors. So I've been able to take everybody out um, on mini walks. There's a wildlife restoration area near me. So there's a couple of ducks. There's a, a couple, literally a couple um, that I'm trying to figure out what I wanna name them that they're the only ducks around right now. I think I actually see them flying around right now <laughs> outside my window, but I see them every day. The wild turkeys sometimes are out and I have to steer clear of them. So it's been really nice to get out. There aren't really too many people out and about. And if we are, we're keeping 
total distance away from each other, um, good healthy distance, but yeah, and lots of cooking. There's been lots of cooking, a little bit of baking. I started Whole30 on March 1st, and for the most part, minus an emergency box of brownie mix, I have kept with it, um, and that just happened a couple of days ago, so I did pretty good. And for I'm gonna do it again uh, in April because it's it's keeping me healthy, it's keeping my immune system healthy, especially right now, and I feel really good, and yeah, it feels, feels really good. So I'm gonna stop babbling, and I will see you all very soon, and as always, a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters, and a special shout out to the amazing creators. I love ya! You all have seen a lot of me this month, so you know who you are. And thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so appreciative. And I will see you, I will see you all very soon in a couple of days. And I'm looking forward to it. And